strangers to hornbows. Acquiring them is important for us to support craftsmen who keep this cultural art alive. However, acquiring a stable of a dozen hornbows or so with different kinetic energy outputs would be expensive and time consuming. Instead, we can anchor our discussion around kinetic energy to see how our test results can apply to historical horn composite bows. Here's the graph we'll use to illustrate how bow type changes the relationship between bow poundage and the kinetic energy of the arrow shot from the bow. A bow type is a category of bow having a particular shape, length, and material. For example, Manchu horn bow, or Tehran 55 inch laminated bow. The x axis shows the bow's draw weight at whatever draw length was used to test the bow, and the y axis shows the kinetic energy of the arrow launched from the bow. In the legend, we use lamb to indicate the bow is a laminated construction, and we use horn to indicate the bow is a horn composite construction. Points in this graph represent numbers from actual measurements. The trend lines represent rough predictions on what each bow type would output at different poundages. We understand these trend lines are a rough approximation. They do not account for differing efficiencies if the arrow mass changes or if the grains per pound changes. They do not account for differing efficiencies among the same bow type made by different bow makers. Without additional data, we don't know if these lines represent upper bounds, lower bounds, or middle of the road performance for each bow type. That said, we hope these plots can be a starting point that provides a mental anchor for future discussion and refinement. We populate the graph using data from this table. This table shows performance results for select laminated and horn composite bow types. We selected for measurements using heavier arrows so that the results would be somewhat comparable between bow types. You can see the spreadsheet in the description for further details on the tests. Let's start with a simple example and just focus on the data for the Tehran 55 inch model indicated in orange points. This is a medium sized bow. I have this bow in multiple poundages so you can see that it is possible to fit a line to them. Based on the fitted trend line, we estimate that a 90 pound Tehran would yield an arrow with 95 joules of kinetic energy. Now let's do the same with other bow types. Here are the data points for other measurements. And here are the fitted lines. We don't have many data points for certain bow types, such as the Manchu hornbow or the Crimean Tatar bow. But for now, a line from the origin to the measurement data point is the best we can do until we can obtain more numbers. Now that we have a more complete graph, we can make some inferences. Let's just focus on the fitted lines to make the graph less cluttered. We notice a few things. First is that the expected outputs for the laminated Tehran 55 inch are close to that of the horn composite Ottoman warbows. The expected outputs for the longer laminated Tehran 68 inch model are somewhere in between Manchu and Crimean Tatar hornbows. This suggests the bows we use for testing are reasonable stand-ins for historical bows. We can further make use of this graph to infer what kind of historical horn composite bow or results would correspond to. For example, in episode two, my 113 pound Tehran 55 inch laminated bow shot arrows at 120 joules. This would be like shooting with a 72 pound Manchu horn bow, a 105 pound Crimean Tatar horn bow, a 111 pound Ottoman horn bow, or a 126 pound Tang Changshou horn bow. Feel free to explore this data in the spreadsheet we link in the description. 